few years ago, I did this diorama. It's a rainy day, downtown block. But I did the rain in Photoshop and I got this comment a lot. Oh, that's cheating, you did the rain in Photoshop. Well, the truth is, I tried loads of methods back then. I tried it with acetate. You can't print white on my printer, so you can just print dark gray. And it didn't really work. I tried and I tried and I failed. So I asked for loads of ideas in the comments and I got them. So this was, oh, let's do rain again. Hmm, I need a rainy scene. Jurassic Park, that classic scene. However, this was not an easy project to do. The rain, the rain was tough and I had a few issues along the way. Now, absolutely ages ago, I bought this model. It's a 3D print SDL from Gambody. So I printed him out. He's big. He was really big. I also decided to put in gates. Now these piles of just plastic, they're PLA prints I designed in Blender. They're all gonna look like that. Promise. I didn't print the base, but I did make the fence threadable instead. This part had an oopsie. It's a little bit bent on this side, not enough support, but hey, he's under a Jeep. Doesn't really matter. So I cut the big boy out, tidied him up a little bit in one or two places. And then it was time to put him together. Once I'd worked out how that tail fitted together, super glue did the trick. And before I knew it, he's ready to stomp on that Jeep. But before I can get to the fun bit and paint him, he's got gaps. See those? Yep, you can see where all the pieces join together. A careful application of Tamiya epoxy putty sorted them all out. Time to paint and he is so big he barely fits in the airbrush booth. But I used Mr Colour Lacquers to add the basic brown coats. Lighter underneath, slightly darker on top and then some dark black shading around his eyes and mouth and down his spine and tail just to add a bit of variety. And whilst the airbrush was out, I sprayed up my Jeep. The top of the Jeep is green, it's a lime green, and it fades down into that yellow, and the airbrush was perfect for this. Back on the workbench, and it's time to bring the T-Rex to life. Now he's a little bit, you know, he's brown, I like him, but he needs a bit more. And I'm doing that in two ways, dry brush and wash. Really, really basic. So he's got his base colour down and I'm dry brushing over it with a paler colour. And I did it lighter underneath than I did on top because he's slightly paler on his tummy. Dry brushing is really simple to do and it works well on a highly detailed print like this. Look at the detail in this Gambody print. There's so much there and it brings it out a treat. But once you've got the highlights out, this is the time to bring in any details that you have. In this case, I needed to paint his eyes. I don't think he brushes his teeth, so they're a little bit off-white and he's got a real build-up of tartar and plaque at the bottom. So I painted the tips basically a lighter colour and let it fade out towards the bottom. His tongue went pale pink. I think that's what it is on all the photos. And I steadied my hand as best I could to put in the black spot in the middle of his eyes. And with all the highlights and details and dry brushing done, it was time to bring out the shadows using an oil wash. This one is the beautifully named Starship Filth. It's actually nothing to do with starships, it's just a nice dark grey. Thin it out with either Terps, which I love the smell of, or White Spirit, and put it on building up layers of darkness into the areas that should be a bit darker. I wanted the T-Rex to be removable. Uh, when I'm working on the diorama, it's easier if he's not there sometimes and the Jeep is gonna get stuck in place in a minute. So I drilled holes and put magnets in his feet and in the top of the Jeep, and I'll put one later on in the base as well. The bottom of this Jeep is gonna be caked in mud, so a quick coat of dark gray paint was all that it needed. Next up, the kids, another Gambody part of their set. It's the 25th anniversary set, so it's quite cool. Painted them up, just base colours, and then an army painter wash over the top to just put swing in the shadows so they don't look quite that plain. They're gonna be under the Jeep, so they'll be mostly hidden. Thankfully, back on the Jeep, the Jeep has a logo on the side of it and Jurassic Park, and they've made it proud with the 3D print. So you have to put on the gradation again, the white to yellow, 
the red line down the middle and then the black edging before some final just enamel wash, it's black enamel wash to tie it all in. Can't forget those red stripes either. The inside is almost visible so I painted it black. But I glued the wheels on and it was time to think mud. I didn't have any tile grout quite the right colour so I added some raw ember paint to just a normal brown tile grout. And I wanted it to be glossy, so I thought to myself, oh, I'll add a gloss water, this model Vassa by Knock. As you can see, it, it went rock solid and gloopy at the same time. I added in some water so it was workable, but it is a really weird mix. There's obviously some chemical reaction going in there, so don't do this at home, probably. What it is, is sort of a pebbly clumps of tar grout and then thin bits of tar grout water and paint in between. But anyway, I put it all over the bottom of the Jeep. I mean, it dried okay, so it came out all right. Well, there's nothing like plastering weird concoctions all over your models. So I went with something I knew and used a Molotov chrome pen to put the lights in and then some translucent orange on any that were well, orange. The gate posts come in three pieces, but before I can do anything with them, I need to put the wires through. And when they're glued together, it's a little tortuous to thread everything through. So I make sure I thread them before I glued. Now the observer will notice these look very different to the T-Rex. They're printed on a filament printer. They're so big it would cost a fortune in resin. And there's no advantage. Filament's actually slightly more stable in this size. But I really don't like the finish on filament printers. You can see there's a lot of rippling on the side on these. Hmm, just doesn't do much for me. So what do I do? Well, I cover them in a spray putty. But first, I put the fence together. This is a concrete base with metal fence posts and I filled the gaps with putty. Now, if you have a filament printer, you'll recognise this next stage. Sanding. A lot of sanding. Note the face mask. A lot of sanding. Eventually, I just bought a mouse. It's a cute little thing and it's attached to my hoover. Many hours, in fact, many layers later, I was happy with the outcome. For items this big, I take them outside and I sprayed them with primer, then aged iron, it's a texture spray paint by Mustoleum, and it is beautiful for sort of iron aged, well, I guess that's what aged iron means. So it's great for this sort of thing. The concrete base of the fence got Desert Beast, another textured Rustoleum paint. I think it looks awesome. But they all looked a bit newly sprayed. So I used an oil wash, something grotty, slightly rusty looking. I mixed it up with some white spirit because it's nice and cheap. But be careful, it does pull your paint off if you put it on too thickly and go back and rework it. So put it on, streak it out, and let it dry. When it's dry and to get variety, go back over it with a different colour. This is Starship Filth. Great colour. And finally, the photo looks a little bit rusty in places, so I went over it with a burnt sienna wash too. I didn't want paint on my concrete base, so I masked it off, glued on the wire holders, and then spray painted those fence posts, gloss black, and then a metallic dual aluminium. All I had to do then was paint up the yellow on the Jurassic Park signs going over the gates. And to me, a red gloss was perfect for the central red sections. And then I just super glued them in place. I actually did this right at the end so I couldn't knock them off. Time for the base. And this is where it all started to unwind a little. I picked up this deep frame base and it said it was A3 and I'd sized everything for A3 acrylic so I thought this is perfect I'm scratching my acrylic that was the comment that came out best I'm gonna use acrylic in it for the sides I've got the gates it's all planned it's all built I'm ready to go hmm I, I can't say that any of this was easy but more on that later first up I put the ply I took the glass out and put the plywood at the top which gives me a nice solid surface to build on so I arranged all the pieces. I'd done all this in 3D planning beforehand, so it wasn't that this was the first time I'd done it. Kids go down, Jeep goes on, fence goes on, T-Rex goes on. 
That's it. Except... He doesn't fit. He doesn't fit on there. That's the big problem. So, not only did he not fit, I had to cut the acetate down. I had to cut my 3D prints down. And on my first test fit, the gates are now hanging in midair, those gate posts. It does splay out a bit at the top, so I have to cut more away. I end up cutting and cutting and cutting, trying to get it square. And, oh, I just shouldn't have done it. I really shouldn't have done it, but I did. So moving on, I used the acetate to space some foam out from the edges and filled the gap in the middle. The triangular corner is slightly deeper because it's the other side of the fence. I faced off the edge of the foam with a piece of card that I'd stained and weathered. Looks just, you hardly see it, it's covered in vegetation. I hot glued the fence in place and dug out a hole for these people to sink into. I cut them out the diorama base that Gambody provided, but I didn't use the rest of that base. So they need to sink down a bit or they won't sink into the mud properly. Then I got out the mud mixture I'd used to weather the Jeep up. Now this is actually a couple of weeks later and with the lid on it kept, which really surprised me, but it was kind of rock solid and clumpy. So it wasn't ideal, but I plastered it anyway because I need to build up a bit of mud on the side and it seemed as good as anything. Note how I carefully left a channel for that acetate for the rain. Mm. In for a penny, in for a pound, I made up more of the concoction, this time with a lot more water and a lot less of that model water and it's still clumped, but hey. I wanted the clumps by now because I got used to them. I'd never do it this way again though, just to tell you, I would never really use this again. That water clumps in an uncontrollable way and I like a little bit more control in my clumping. And here's the problem, we're using weird, unusual products. I didn't put as much brown paint in the second one, so it's more tar grout coloured and the first one has cracked as it's dried. Okay, so this was always going to be the base coat, I knew that. Easily solved, I'll just add more brown paint into the mix and it's a bit thinner now so it's more painty with maybe a few of the lumps of that targa stuff in it and I'll just paint it all over the surface and it'll be fine, honest. And here's a top tip, protect your models with cling film if you don't want them to get muddy but you do want them to sink into the surface. So we're on the home stretch and now it's time to make that mud pop. It just looks a bit boring and there's a lot of it and it's not as glossy as I want it to be but all that's easily sorted with a bit of dry brushing and then I went back to that model Vasa, the model water. I've also got AK Interactive Still Water. They're basically a thick acrylic water product but they produce a high shine and look really great over something like this mud. But now the fun bit. Time to get out my box of goodies from Diorama Precipe. Fabio sent me this amazing box of goodies for a project at the start of the year and this is the third project that I've used them on. I put them on the Pirates of the Caribbean, I put them on my jungle waterfall and it's a gift that's going to keep on giving for probably the rest of my life. There is so much stuff in here. So I pulled out everything that looked remotely jungle-like, bearing in mind I've done a jungle waterfall so I have a good idea what's going to fit here and which my favourites are. The Gambody fences came with 3D printed wire, but I thought it was going to be a bit thin and probably going to break. So I made my own using basically normal wire. I stripped off the plastic, I put it in a drill and I twisted it up and I just threaded it through. I didn't even bother gluing it in place, I just bent it so it looked reasonable. Before I went any further, I had to get those gate posts in. But first, I needed to wire them up. And with a big shout out to Boilie Hobby Times, it's a tea light and that is going to be my flickering flames on the gate posts. I used that little top piece and then the interior LED that flickers and I wired them into a three volt supply. Test light! Wow, we have light! But they're not really very flamey. The answer was Splash Gel by Green Stuff World. I had it for a project. This I'd actually found on the side and was half dried out. So it was really nice and thick. And I put it on in flamey wamey types of patterns. They look great when the light's on, but when it's not on, they just look weird, white flames. So I painted them with a translucent clear orange paint by Tamiya. And 
I am pleased with these. I do like how they look. Now, because I've ditched the acetate sides, I can make the top and the sides black, enclose it all and light it so I get a much better effect. So I'm using five volt LED strips lit with the three volt supply. They still light up. I've got a white curved one over the dinosaur, a blue straight one over the back where there's some blue tone in the scene. I've used baffles to stop them blinding you from the front. And then I put plate packing material folded up and stuck in place with double-sided sticky tape to diffuse the back blue light. I've been thinking about doors for a while and now I was enclosing it, it seemed like the perfect time to add the doors to the sides and the front. So I made some from basswood and balsa wood and then just stained them with some wood stain I had. Peruvian mahogany. Then I looked at the vegetation and added a few more bits at the back and I was done. And at this point, it went on the side for weeks and weeks while I thought about rain. Scratching acetate, well, that sucks. So what's plan B? But could I project the rain like a video over the front? Then it would be moving. It wouldn't be the static scratching you get and it's very easy to do with this new projector I'd bought. Press play on your phone, it mirrors, you get rain. Ooh. I got a couple off the internet, but neither of these rain videos really worked for me. So I made my own. Hmm, a little bit glitchy perhaps. And here's the final rain video. Well, with that's done, it must be time to show off the whole diorama. everyone who made comments on my last rain video let me know what you think of this one do you like projected rain do you have any better ideas if not i'll see you next time and thank you for watching don't forget subscribe support me you know all that usual stuff people put at the end but main thing i hope is that you enjoyed the video see you soon